Hi, and welcome to this tutorial for using the Oculus MetaQuest 2 for viewing 360 videos as part of the Kefili Over 50s Inside Outside VR project. Today we're going to go over three core elements. Part 1, Setup. We're going to show how to navigate the virtual menus on the headset to set up the device ready for viewing, covering quick settings, Wi-Fi internet, boundary and pass-through settings, and downloading apps. Part 2, 360 videos, we're going to show where you can find the Inside Outside VR videos with an online and offline option. Part 3, casting. We're going to show two different ways to cast the screen so people outside of VR can see what the user inside is viewing. Here is the Oculus Home. It's a virtual space, a nice cliffside residence uh, that you stand in, but in front of you is a little taskbar with lots of apps on, and to access them you use this controller that has a trigger that you can use to point around the space with a little laser pointer, and it acts a lot like a mouse would on a computer. So when I say click on a button during this tutorial, what I mean is point at the button with this controller and pull the trigger with your index finger. There are many other buttons on the controller, however, we will not be using most of them except for very specific circumstances to keep it nice and simple. First, we're going to access the quick settings by clicking on this area around where the time, Wi-Fi and battery symbol is on the taskbar. I admit it's not hugely intuitive, but you do get used to it. Here you can see some of the settings I want to cover in part one, Wi-Fi, boundary, and pass-through. In Wi-Fi, it's very similar to any modern Wi-Fi device. The headset tells you which nearby signals it can detect and you simply choose the correct one and enter a password if it's required. Just a reminder that some venues like care homes might have more restrictive Wi-Fi in which the device needs registering with the IT slash admin team there. They should be able to sort it though. Now if you kick back from the Wi-Fi settings it will bring you to this more complex settings menu to avoid confusion, simply click away from this screen and go back to the quick settings menu through the taskbar. Remember, it's the weird time Wi-Fi battery button again? By boundary settings, we mean the actual physical space that you are reserving around you in the real world for using VR. You can access the settings for that here. But you may have already had to use this setting when you actually turned the headset on initially. So this might be the first thing you see when you turn on your Oculus headset. It'll say confirm boundary and what you won't be able to see on this video is that below me is a large blue circle showing that I am in a stationary position. This allows me to click confirm to suggest I want to keep this boundary. However, I could choose to have a room scale boundary which would allow me to walk around the space. Now most of our users won't want to do that and it won't be possible to, but I will quickly show you how to do it. If you were to do that, you click create a new boundary and instead of seeing the circle, you will see a row, like on the picture here, you will see a lot of X's on the floor. And you can use your controller to touch the floor to, to say where you want the floor to be. And you confirm that. And then you actually draw a space on the ground around the space that you want to walk around. A better picture of what's going on here in the animation because you won't be able to see my marks on the floor through the recording. However, we are going to use a stationary boundary and we're just and because it just works better with a sitting clear experience, so we're just going to press confirm. That sorts out the boundary. 
And if we were doing this through the quick setting menu, we would find ourselves back on here, boundary. However, you may just choose to not use the boundary settings and instead use just pass through. If you use pass through, all you're doing is clicking this one and instead of uh, there being the virtual space around you, what you can't see here, but I guarantee is here, is my office around me. So it's using the cameras on the outside of the headset to tell me where I am in the real world using a black and white camera image. Uh, so I'm actually sat in my office. I can see that all around me, but uh, you can't. Um, that means uh, yet yeah, you won't have the 3D space and you can't walk around it, but it does give you a very good, solid uh, experience in terms of just being sat still. From pass-through, I believe if we do choose to access some videos now, it will allow you to do that from a pass-through position. So we may not need to use the virtual spaces at all, and we can use pass-through to access these videos. So, how do we actually find the apps that we need to play our videos? Well, um, like any modern device, you need to go to a store, whether that's the iOS store on, the, on an Apple phone or the Play Store on a Google phone or various other stores that phones have. The headset has its own store and it's called the MetaQuest Store. It's here on the taskbar. You just need to click it with the, with the controller and it brings up the store page will have lots of games available because it's often used for gaming as a device. But we go to the search up here. We're going to search for the two different ones we want. So the first one is YouTube. Um, and you see it's a quick selection there, but you might be able to type in the whole thing. And we've already got it installed here, but you just click install. It's completely free. So everyone should have access to YouTube VR. The other one then is called play apostrophe r now i found the easiest way to play this is actually to find this is actually to put video player into the search because if you search for video player it'll bring up these apps and then now this is where i need to show you one thing on the controller that otherwise is uh, we haven't used which is this can can you if you can see the joystick the joystick allows you to scroll down the page so we've put in video player we've got some apps that we don't want to run so we're going to use the stick to drag down and see the app lab area now this is where we can see apps that are still in development but they are free and work quite well we found this video player one works really well with what we want it to do it's a simple way of playing videos off your headset Again, it's already installed on here, uh, but if you were to find it using this, you would be able to freely um, install it from the blue button. So, now we're on to part two, where we need to find the videos and play them. To find the videos, we have to go into the two apps that we should have installed. The first one I'm going to show you is our offline way of watching the videos that are actually on the physical headset that you are using. We have installed on the headsets multiple videos that you should be able to access via the player video player. We've got this on the quick selection here. If you don't have it here, you might find it here in the library button that you can access from the standard uh, squares icon that most um, mobile device happens to access your library of uh, applications. We will just uh, find the player video app there and pull the trigger or click to access it. Once we're in player, we're presented with this quite complex view of all the files on the device. Now we don't need to access any of these. We just want to try and find our videos. Now on the videos that we've already got, on the headsets that we've set this up on, we you should find the videos pinned under My Pinned Files. Here you'll find all of the headsets that are on, all the videos that are on the headset locally. And uh, they're probably about 60% of the full, of the amount of videos that we've got totally. Um, but they're usually the best ones. And to play them, you very simply just point your laser pointer at them. In this case, my controller has turned into a hand. 
and you pull the trigger to click on it. So again, we're going to load up Lakeside uh, at, at Rove Park. And it will go back to anywhere you were previously if you're watching the video. So I was watching this earlier, so we're about two minutes in. And you can see there, I am recording this Lakeside view. If you want to pause it at any point, you just need to click on pause. If you want to get rid of this menu while playing to get your full view, you um, can either just need to click away. If you just click on the picture, it will remove it and you get um, just the imagery. Now, you might find that your user is sat in a way in the room that they're not actually facing the front of the video that maybe they're looking at where the action isn't happening and you w want them to be facing the direction that they're moving, particularly with motion sickness, it can be quite important. If you bring up the menu again by just clicking anywhere, this button in the middle, the square of a circle in it, will recenter the view. So if we click that, we get a little timer and it goes back to what is front for the VR video which is usually the move, the way I'm moving if we are moving. Or the most interesting view, say, for example, the ducks on the lake. There are options for repeating or looping videos if you want to, uh, but I will let you discover those yourself. And there is volume options here, but there is also the volume rocker on the headset itself if you need to do any, if you want to adjust the volume of any sound in the video. Once you've seen the video or you want to move on to a different one, you can click this button here to exit the video and you can choose a different video. To exit this program completely, to go back to the Oculus Home, we need to click the exit button down here, which you can see is a uh, standard off and on power symbol from many devices over history. It'll get ask you if you want to exit and you say yes. So that's how you view the head videos that are part of the headset that we have installed on most of them. If you want to view our full playlist, you will need to make sure you've you got on the Wi-Fi and you have a decent enough Wi-Fi to use YouTube VR to find the Cafili Over 50s VR playlist. You open up the YouTube app, which again, we've put on the quick selection here, but you can see in the library as well by clicking on it. Now, once you're in YouTube, you can sign into your account and subscribe to our page. And obviously there's an awful lot of, um, well, let's just say nonsense on YouTube, but we're looking for our 360 videos. So um, you can choose youtube to show you only 360 videos by clicking on this tab and that will show you a bunch of 360 videos from across the world people doing music people doing skydiving water sports rock climbing wingsuits lots of quite extreme things however inside outside was about finding local experiences around uh south wales and uh recording them so um to find our playlist you need to go to search here and the easiest way to do this is to search the two words Playframe, which is the name of uh, my company that's done this uh, uh, filming, and uh, then Kefili, because we're part of Kefili over 50s. If you've searched those two terms, you will find the Kefili's 50 plus VR project Playframe, and this is a playlist. So this is all the videos we've done for the project. If you click this, you can select any of them individually, or you could just click play all, and then you will always have a list of them on the side to choose from if you go into the menu. So this is the same video, it's the beginning. As you can see, you might see, is that it's actually quite lower quality than the on on the, the, the video version that's actually on the headset itself. Um, but the fact that you have all the videos accessible is, uh, is wonderful. And if you have a better internet connection, you may be able to increase the quality if you choose to. Now, like the other video player, 
To access the menu, you just need to click anywhere and it will bring up the pause and in this case skip and volume and, and the tracking options to choose a part in the video but also we've got the entire playlist here so we can just skip to the next one we could go to the falconry show for example dreaming of a beautiful lush and then obviously garden quite summer, frustratingly we have adverts has been because designing this is youtube tools for um this is the falconry show that we recorded at the national botanic garden of wales um Obviously, if you subscribe to the channel, it makes it easier to, for you to find these future videos. Now, again, if you find your play, your person facing the wrong direction, they are sitting in the room in the wrong way, and for some reason when they look at the video, they seem to be facing not where the action is happening. In this case, instead of recentering, we have uh, we actually just drag the viewer around, which is in a way more flexible because if it find if you find that the action's moving and the person is not turning their head, you can turn it, you can turn the video for them. So what we do is we use the controller, and in this case, the click or the, the the trigger is like a grab. So you grab the picture, and it puts a big box around it, and you move it to the side to drag it round to the view we want. So look at this. Now we can actually see the beautiful bird as it flies away. To quit the YouTube app, we have to, instead of using an off button like the other player, we need to use the Oculus button on the actual controller that you can see just below the joystick. When you press that, you are presented with this user interface screen where you can quit the application that you are currently in, taking you back to the Oculus home. In part three, we're going to show two different ways to cast the screen so that people outside of the VR experience can see what the person inside is seeing. Obviously, you need an internet connection for this, so you must follow the Wi-Fi part of the tutorial in part one. Chromecasts are part of a range of small computer devices that plug directly into the HDMI port on most modern TVs. This enables us to stream content to the TV from a variety of sources. If you use the Chromecast we have for this project, you will find it already initially set up, and all you need to do is follow this video to set it up on the Wi-Fi that is the same network as the MetaQuest headset. If you have your own Chromecast or Smart TV, just follow the device's instructions and make sure it is on the same network as the MetaQuest headset. The new Chromecast through TV work with these controllers, which allow you to uh, navigate a menu. So I'm going to press um, a button here to then open up the menu. This will show a range of images uh, about videos that exist on various apps you can watch. Um, we're not going to use any of these, but we are going to check that we are on the internet. So um, if you uh, navigate using the highlighted, and, and imagine this is an arrow to the right, and navigate over to the cog here, and that puts us into the menu and we're going to find the Wi-Fi settings here, okay? Yeah, the Wi-Fi is on, but it obviously doesn't have a uh, connection, so we're going to find the right Wi-Fi, which is this one. And then I'm just going to type in the password. After entering your password, you then just need to go to the tick button and then it should connect you to the Wi-Fi. You might have to do this, if you're using a fresh Chromecast, you might have to do this before uh, even seeing the initial picture. Uh, but once you've done that, um, now that's up and running, really everything else we do is, is from the headset point of view. Weirdly, you can't actually access the casting from the quick menu. You actually have to go to this camera option here, which we, again we've pinned to the, to the taskbar here. <laughs> and you can select cast. Now while recording, I can't actually cast, so I'm gonna to have to turn off the recording and record uh, a stream from my headset to the monitor to show you how it works. You can also cast from the Oculus menu accessed by the little O button on the controller from within the apps. Either way works exactly the same. As you can see, I'm casting now this uh, the player from the uh, oculus menu you can 
because this will also work in YouTube. And uh, we, all we did was press this cast button and we chose the device here and press start casting. We're not going to press stop casting now because I just want to show you what happens to get out of this little menu. Click resume. So we're back into the app that we have all the videos in. I'll go back to my pin files, select the Rove Park video. And there you can see on our uh, telly uh, that I am uh, watching myself in VR. Finally, we're going to show you how to cast to an internet browser on any computer or laptop that is on the same Wi-Fi network as the headset. To get the most of this for an event, I would suggest connecting that computer or laptop to a big monitor or TV with a HDMI cable so that everyone can see what's going on. Firstly, open any modern internet browser on the laptop. I suggest Chrome as I know it works well, but I'm sure Edge or Firefox or Safari work fine as well. Use Google to search for Oculus Casting or go directly to oculus.com forward slash casting. This will present you with a login screen where you have to log in with a Meta account. Any will do, and bearing in mind Meta own Facebook, Instagram and WhatsApp and more probably. Um, so. You can use those ones or you can create a new one with a junk email address or potentially an email address for the institution that you're doing the event at. Once you've signed in, you should see this page with instructions on how to start casting. Once this screen is being displayed, you need to only select your computer from the casting menu within the headset. And this is what it looks like while casting. You can make the cast full screen using the mouse on the computer by clicking this button here. Obviously, it might be easier for someone outside of VR to do this for you. Either this solution or the Chromecast solution should make it relatively easy for the VR experience to be enjoyable for everyone at an event, whether you're inside or outside VR. Hopefully you found this video useful. Please bookmark this video for future reference or do check out the links in the description for further details on guides for setting up the various pieces of hardware that I've used in this tutorial. Thanks for watching.